Welcome converting robot enjoyers to this channel's first ever Battle of the Ages. Because apparently comparing two figures of the same character is a thing people sometimes do. I recently tracked down this newly released Kingdom Tracks, and for reasons that will become very apparent later, I decided to, in a sense, review both his generation's representations from the Reveal the Shield Tracks released in 2010 and the 2021 Kingdom figure to seek out which of these two pompous piles of plastic is the winner, and by extension, the superior toy. I'll first be examining the individual robot modes, then moving on to the transformation, and then moving on to the vehicle modes. It's not rocket surgery, it's pretty basic and straightforward. So let's turn back the clock to 11 years ago, wait seriously, with Reveal the Shield Turbo Tracks. Hang on to your bobby socks! Now for context, this new decade narcissist released during the really early days of the Generations toy line, and many of the figures released at that time were the first ever legit mass-released classic style depictions of these characters since the 80s, like Scourge, Perceptor, Rekgar, and of course, Jax. Hence why he looks a bit more chunky and less cartoon stylized than today's figures. But even with the slight datedness, this figure still really holds up after all these years. Immediately, he has a lot of presence with his broad body and very mechanical overall look. All the colors are separated to a satisfying standard, and this particular royal blue is super alluring. The detail throughout really works for me. I feel like this is a bit more focused on having one foot in realism, at least compared to the Sunbow cartoons model, and another foot in comic stylization. Now as a figure released for the Reveal the Shield roster, this ruffian is ready to reveal some shield with a rub sign. For the uninitiated, a rub sign is a heat-sensitive faction symbol that will appear when scorched by the friction of your fingers. Gee, I wonder who this is gonna be! An Autobot? Gee, who would have guessed? This feature does quite tickle me though, if nothing else because of how little this is seen from non-G1 toys. I would have liked this figure equally if it had a normal Autobot logo, but we're getting into the groove. As for accessories, he comes with one fold-out missile launcher blast or whatever, as well as two white missiles which easily and satisfyingly clip on behind his head with a sensational snap. There are things about this figure that do keep it from being an absolutely great toy though. I personally don't mind the backpack by any means, however the wings are a bit busy here. The proportions of his arms make them appear a bit more thin than they should. The knee joints aren't loose, but not as solid as they are when bent. And the shoulder ball joints are all pretty basic, especially for a figure of this size class. And that's kind of it. Those are really my only problems with this robot mode, and just about all of them are ones I can easily overlook. Looking at it, it's interesting how good this figure still is 11 years on. And it could still absolutely fit in with a modern generations collection, better than other figures from that era. So as a whole, RTSTT is really the TTB. And now let's fast forward to see how well we're doing 11 years on with this same character's successor. It's Kingdom Tracks. If it weren't for me, you'd be fricasseed punk right now. So how well does the 2021 Tracks fare in comparison to his 2010 self? Well... Okay, let me put it this way. In a lot of ways it is an improvement, but in a lot of ways it's also a major downgrade. Starting with the positives, on a strictly visual note, this figure looks fantastic. It appears like a perfect update of Trax. The painted detail throughout is very respectable on the arms and especially the face. This head sculpt as a whole is just simply gorgeous. Like the reveal the shield head does what it has to, but it just looks so crisp and lovely with the dynamic angles, vibrant red, and brilliant white. The Kingdom fella goes for a more G1 cartoon inspired look, making it blend in with the updated generations figures a bit more seamlessly than Turbo Tracks. And this figure comes with two accessories, one of which is a typical blaster, nothing mind blowing, but it's something. And the other is this white piece representing two missiles which pegs onto the top of the Tracks backpack. But this robot mode is just so frustrating because of how absolutely close it is to being great, but there's just too many major problems with it. Like how unbelievably loose his legs were right out the box. I actually managed to tighten these joints successfully, but it lets this figure down quite a bit, especially for something I just opened like two weeks ago. And the sides of his legs are... Like, how did these make it past production? They're clearly supposed to attach to the legs, but these are the least effective pegs I think I've ever seen. Also, while I don't mind that this figure has a backpack, basically 90% of it is made out of this brittle clear plastic that you have to hold on to firmly if you want to fit the white missile piece on successfully, and it does not feel good. Trust me, we'll get back to this piece. So yeah, looking at the robot mode, it absolutely looks the part. 
Just about everything sculpt-wise is here, and it's so unbelievably close to achieving a perfect modern tracks form that I just kind of want to give it to this figure, but with a bad back and legs with the consistency of spaghetti, I actually kind of want to give it to the 2010 figure. I think the dilemma I'm faced with here is that one of these figures looks better on a purely aesthetic basis, while the other has a more sturdy, solid build. I listed fewer problems on Kingdom tracks, but those are issues bigger than anything I could say about the Reveal the Shield figure, so yeah, the 2010 Reveal the Shield tracks wins for robot mode. Moving on to transformations, converting our Reveal the Shield boy is straightforward enough. The ball jointed arms makes things a bit more fiddly than it needs to be, and getting everything to clamp shut can be somewhat strange. However, it's still absolutely doable, and going back into robot mode, you get this sweet automorph head reveal. I also appreciate how the accessories have a place to hide in the car mode. It does what it must and everything works how it should in the end, and ultimately feels quite satisfying, especially when arriving at this lovely car mode. Kingdom tracks, however, just feel so awkward and fragile. Splaying out the translucent backpack is a brittle nightmare. And you seriously need to flex some of the translucent plastic just to get it in place! I kept looking back at the instructions like, Wait, is that how it's supposed to go? And yeah, that's how it's supposed to go! The legs also feel really weird and are unreasonably picky about what order the steps are supposed to be done in, which I feel like changes based on the weather. And you see these translucent tabs that have been cut off near the hood section? I cut those off, because getting them to tab in was almost impossible and really makes you evaluate the line between being forceful and outright breaking the thing when going back into robot mode. I know I said that clamping everything shut on the 2010 figure was strange, but oh my goodness, it's a walk in the park compared to this thing. So yeah, Reveal the Shield Tracks has hands down the better transformation. Everything fits better, things feel more solid, and it just is more rewarding. Are you sensing a pattern here? And finally, moving on to the alt modes, RTS Tracks shows off as this long and imposing machine that gives off the impression of sheer intensity. This is what makes all the broad and questionable proportions work for me, all to benefit this combative shape of this thing. The paint's applied very elegantly on the front section with the silver lights as well as the silver on the wheels. I'm not sure how to feel about the hood flames though. They just kind of look a little douchebaggy, but they don't stop the overall car mode from being an absolute treat. It rolls nicely, the royal blue just shines here, and this is just a good car mode. Also, as a callback to his 80 self, Trax can do this flying car mode. I guess I appreciate that they thought to do this, but honestly, this really isn't something I care too much about. It looks a bit fan mode -y, but as far as I'm aware, this is just a harmless easter egg that does no trouble to the car mode at all. Like, it's super easy to ignore, but it's there if you want it. RESPECT! Now on to Kingdom Tracks, and to be fair, this is definitely the more successful of the two modes, in that as a car, it's not really expected to have humanoid joints. I really dig the very stylized shape of this thing. While the other figures all muscle, this one's all flare and roundiness. And while I really don't like how most of it is made out of a shell of translucent plastic, I admit that the blue paint makes the light reflect off it beautifully and just gives it a bit of a premium looking finish. Ultimately, however, not even this car mode has managed to escape the quality control hive that festers over this thing. For one thing, these side pieces, you know, the terrible ones from the legs, are super fussy and just refuse to peg in properly. On a good day, I could get the left one, but the right one is just not into it. I'd be a lot more forgiving if this was an issue with just my copy, but from what I hear, this is apparently a widespread issue with this figure. Personally, I feel like I got off lucky that I can peg in even one. That's how common this issue is. And when getting ready for liftoff in the flying car mode, the left fin has a tendency to just pop off. Everyone loves it when their toys do this. Looking at Flying Car 2, now with wings, it is noticeably better than the Reveal the Shield one. It feels more considered and deliberate rather than looking like a fan mode. Again, this isn't something I care too much about, I'm never going to keep either figure in this mode, but it's something, alright? Overall, Kingdom Tracks' alt mode is, just like the robot mode, so close to being there. It's really losing this race by a single second. I love the cartoonified aesthetic and the clown shoe body type, all it has to do is not have those two easily avoidable QC issues and everything would be all sunshine and roses for this guy. But because the other one just does an overall slightly better job at keeping a cohesive piece, I once again have to give it to reveal the shield tracks for the alt mode. Not that the Kingdom 1 is bad by any means, but a super widespread issue on the same tab on the very front section, yeah that's gonna, that's gonna knock you down a few points.
And with all that said, the 2010 Reveal the Shield Turbo Trax reigns supreme over the Kingdom figure and wins the title of the superior toy. So I guess the question is, what went wrong with Kingdom Trax? Look, I'll happily forgive some kind of fault if I feel it's within reason. I'm not someone who demands absolute perfection. Usually it's hard to even find one Transformer with some kind of quality control problem. But this figure has five! At least from what I can name. And some of the design choices are just bad. I think Kingdom Tracks is honestly, for me, the most disappointing release of the War for Cybertron trilogy. It's not an entirely bad figure by any means, but it's just so frustrating with how well it almost works but falls apart. I really hope I'm not coming across as one of those try-hard contrarians who go on about how old school is better than new school. Wow, you think an older thing you grew up with is better than a newer thing you have no fond memories or nostalgia for? You must be so interesting. But I actually bought Reveal the Shield Tracks after getting the Kingdom one, which is not the best endorsement for Kingdom Tracks. Just wanted to make it clear that I'm not trying to be like that. Because on the whole, Transformers toys have been better now than they've been at any point, at least in the past few decades. Well, when you think about it, the power of the Primes Optimus is better than the Earthrise one. Really? Do you really think that? I just don't think this particular Kingdom figure lives up to the rest of the War for Cybertron trilogy. I know everyone likes to drag Earthrise RC, but that figure had a lot going on. It was trying to be a faithful 3D realization of RC's show design, which was super humanoid and turned into a weird, dense future car. Meanwhile, Trax is just a car bot. He's got a windshield on his chest. His legs arms are made out of the front of a car. The back of the car is on his back. <laughs> this isn't something that needs to be overcomplicated, you know? Am I missing the point here? With all that said though, if you're just looking for a Trax figure to fit into your display of 1985 Autobots and don't plan on transforming this figure, then sure, get this guy. It does look stellar amongst his friends. Looking good is the number one thing this figure knows how to do right. But if you want a Trax figure that you'll actually play with, transform, and have fun with, then I have to recommend Reveal the Shield Trax. I wouldn't call it an absolute home run of a toy, but it still definitely works as a plastic depiction of Trax. I should stress though that I'm not really bitter at Kingdom Tracks though, because as a whole, Kingdom has been really good with tons of satisfying toys. It's one of those things that just really makes me think about how good of a time it is to be a Transformers person. So if Tracks is the worst of the bunch, I think we're doing alright. So those are my comparisons of the two generations Tracks figures. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I guess put it in the comment section if you want. Drive up interactivity on this video. And Tracks a lot for watching!